I want to talk to you today about the porn plague that is making so many people in our world today sick and even killing people, okay? I want to make five points because there's a gazillion things I can say. So five points. The first point, and, and this is especially to you young people who are struggling with an addiction to pornography. Listen to me. It's not your fault, okay? There's a plague in this world. Your culpability is extremely low and almost negligible. It's not your fault that our world today is plagued with the enemy of pornography, okay? You need to understand that God is not judging you. He just wants to save you, okay? He wants to save you. In John chapter 3, verse 16, the Lord Jesus says, for, uh, verse 17, you all know John 16, I hope. John 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through you. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Your sexuality is one of the most intimate parts of your being. It goes at a deep, deep level of your being. And if you're affected by the plague of pornography, it will prevent your sexuality from becoming properly integrated. You will have a disintegrated sexuality. And that'll affect your whole, your whole being. Your, your, your soul will be sick. It will be diseased. And again, God wants to save you from this. But he doesn't condemn you. He, he, again, it's, it's not your fault. It's not even your parents' fault. I mean, parents need to do what they can to protect, you know, shelter their children from this. But how do you do that today? I don't know. So that's the first point. It's not your fault, okay? Just, just remember that. It's a plague. It's, it's, it's affecting almost everybody. Okay, second point. And this is all over the place, but in 2 Macca Maccabees chapter 5, verse 27, it says, But Judas Maccabeus and about nine others withdrew to the wilderness to avoid sharing in defilement. There he... And his companions lived like animals in the hills, eating what grew wild. Judas Maccabeus, he had to escape to the desert to avoid defilement. Just like the Hebrew people, they had to get out of Egypt, spend 40 years in a desert. Just like King David, he had to escape Paul and go live in the wilderness with he and his band of brothers. My brothers and sisters... If you wish to avoid and escape the plague of pornography, you have to escape to the desert. You can't be of this world. I'm not talking literally about moving out into the desert somewhere, literally. I'm talking um, figuratively. You can't be of the world. I'm not going to try to micromanage your life and tell you what that means, tell you what movies you can watch and what music you should listen to and you know wh whatever else. You you're a smart person. You can figure that out, but you can't be of the world. You have to figuratively speaking be a person living in the desert, in a desert. You have to be in the world but not of this world. Okay, my next scripture for you just to back it up. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 and uh, 15 John says do not love the world or the things of the world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him again i'm not going to give you a detailed instruction on how to not be of this world you you can figure that out but you must make a decision to cut yourself off from the sinful, corrupt ways of the world. You have to be not of the world. 
You have to, again, figuratively speaking, be a man, a woman living in the desert. Okay, fourth point. I'm already over time. I apologize. When Moses was battling against Amalek, uh, it says in uh, Exodus chapter 17, verse 11, as long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. The hands raised represents a life of prayer. You have to be unremitting in prayer. You got to go to Mass. You got you to pray the rosary if you can. Read scripture. If you are persistent in prayer, the battle will still go on. You'll still take a beating. You'll still have temptations. You'll still have falls. But as it says, you will have the better of the fight. The moment you stop praying, you, you're going to you're gonna lose the battle. The battle will go to the enemy. You got to be a man, a woman of unremitting prayer. And then one last scripture, and there's a gazillion more things I could say about this. One last scripture, Exodus chapter 23, um, beginning in verse 29. It says, the Lord tells the Hebrew people, you see, they get into the pr promised land. And they think, yeah, everything is going to be great now. No, there are still enemies in the land. And they're not going to be gone even in one year. You're going to have to fight them. I'm going to read it to you. But I will not drive them all out before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the wild animals multiply against you. Little by little, I will drive them out before you. Again, this, 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 this porn plague, it's not, you're not going to overcome this in one year. A lot of us, including myself, you know, you experience a, a grace of the Holy Spirit in your life. You experience freedom and you think, hey, great, I'm never going to struggle with this again. I'm free forever. And then as time goes on, the battle returns. Why does the battle return? Because in a mysterious way, this battle is meant to to make us into saints. God works all things for good for those who love him. This is a battle you must fight with unremitting prayer, trusting entirely on the power of the Holy Spirit, living in the word, believing in Jesus. And through this battle, God will make you into a holy man, a holy woman of God. So don't be discouraged. God does not condemn you. He wants to save you, but you have to walk with him.